Hello, I'm Jan Cosgrove bringing you the Bognor Herald video news for the 27th of February 2022. This is based on the Herald Weekly Review, which you can read at our website, and also we publish stories daily on our Facebook page. The world news focus this week is Ukraine, and it also has to lead our local news. A 14-year-old girl has fled from Ukraine to Bogner just ahead of war criminal Putin's unlawful invasion of independent Ukraine. More refugees are leaving in their thousands. We have other numerous stories of people in our area affected by a conflict which changes the face of Europe and indeed the world. There is a live YouTube stream from Kiev. Now other Ukrainian and British people are fleeing and caught up in it. We have also a very astute analysis of Putin's dreams of restoring Russian Empire from a Kenyan diplomat at the UN based on colonial experience that his country experienced. On Facebook last week I raised the issue of Ukrainian refugees and Britain playing its part by taking our share. Of course most people said reacted that we must but there was for me the shameful minority who raised the I word immigration. You know, war veterans, no space, no heart, economic migrants and the rest. Here we give it the name it deserves, xenophobia. A payment boycott of southern water has been in place since last October as a protest against sewage dumping by the company. This is in Whitstable, Kent, by four individuals. Could that take off in Bognor? Also, we have an interview with Dr. James Walsh, who gives us a very clear view of this matter, plus what he thinks of the easing of COVID lockdown restrictions. Essential viewing and uncomfortable for those in power. UK-based engineering company Dulas, the only manufacturer of World Health Organization accredited off-grid solar-powered vaccine refrigerators in the UK, officially opened their expanded factory in Bognor Regis this week. To mark the opening, Minister for Exports Mike Freer MP, along with senior Department of Trade officials, visited the factory. There is also news from the Arundel Bypass campaign, whose protest in Chichester was joined by Extinction Rebellion. They are all mobilising locally against the chosen route. We carry their full argument. Aaron's Tory administration has just fixed the council's budget for next year. Read the details and also view the recorded council meeting in full, key supply advised at least, and Councillor Sean Gunner is live on Aaron's Facebook to answer your questions on the 28th of February, that's Monday. Now, that interview with Dr James Walsh. Well, hello everyone. Uh, I've got an interview today and I'm really pleased to welcome a good friend of uh, Aaron's and the people in the area, uh, Dr. James Walsh, who is not only a county councillor and leader of the Liberal Democrat group at Aaron District Council, but for many people, he is Dr. Walsh, uh, a retired GP, uh, served in the Little Hampton area. And I'm asking James now at this point, hello James. Good morning, Ian. Uh, I'm uh, I'm asking Jeff James about uh, the COVID uh, restrictions and their lifting, and I'd like his James. Please be frank. Tell me frankly, as a, a, a medic, retired or otherwise, please tell me your views on what this means and whether you're happy with it. Um, I, I'm not entirely happy because I think it's too premature. Um, I think easing the uh, restrictions is the right course because we do appear to be coming out of the current wave. And I stress that very much, it's the current wave. The lesson of the epidemic, pandemic epidemic so far is that there are different components and different waves. We had the original one, we had Delta, we had just getting through Omicron. There will undoubtedly be further variants that pop up. They may be more severe, they may be milder. We don't know. And therefore to remove all restrictions um, is crazy, particularly when people have got used to particularly wearing masks, which have been shown to be an extremely effective way of reducing transmission in the community. And I see that as particularly the, um, um, the wrong move at this current time. 
and I certainly, and I know lots of local residents, will continue to wear masks very sensibly in the more crowded places such as shops and uh, public transport, and I would urge them to continue to do so. Of course, um, vaccination is a very important component to the prevention of the spread and the severity of the disease. And therefore, again, I would urge everybody to take up not only the offers of the first two doses, but the booster doses as they come along, um, which will take care of the emerging uh, new strains and components uh, of the virus. A bit like the flu vaccine that uh, m many of us have had annually for years. Um, each year it's a slightly different vaccine that's been changed to cope with the new and emerging strains of flu each year. So, um, yes, I, I'm un unhappy with this um, extreme libertarian view that it's all over, we can forget the precautions, get on with life as before, life as normal, when we have still got thousands of people in hospital, we've still got hundreds of people dying each week from the disease, and we have the possibility of new variants arriving. Yes, we've got to learn to live with it, but we've got to be prepared and deal with it as appropriately as I've indicated. Well, what I've just read actually last uh, last 24 hours that in America, a new faster spreading or transmissible version of Omicron seems to pop up there. We'll wait here on that. Uh, that is to me concerning, I have to say. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously your advice then is mask up and uh, be careful. Yes, and I also would say that if people, um, the, the other component that worries me is the withdrawal of the free lateral flow ah, testing, yes. because free lateral flow testing has been a significant factor in um, identifying where there has been local upsurges in the disease, um, preventing spread by getting people to restrict their movements and indeed self-isolate. And therefore, if they are to become a, a chargeable item, that very many fewer tests will be likely to be carried out. We won't know if a new um, strain is spreading in a particular area quite so early, and the public health measures to contain it won't be so uh, won't be introduced so um, uh, early enough to be effective. So I deprecate the withdrawal of um, free lateral flow testing as well. Yes. Thank you for that, because that's extremely interesting. But by, by the way, my two grandchildren this morning are going for their first. One's 12, one's 15. They're in their first one. Uh, Nanny is taking them. <laughs> so, Excellent. Uh, in about, a few, about, about half an hour. So uh, that's a Bogner Health Centre. They've done an excellent Good. job. And I have to say the volunteers have been superb all the way through. Um, yes, I'd like to pay credit to, to all the volunteers from our communities who've actually been helping with the rollout. It wouldn't have happened so quickly, so effectively, if it hadn't been for the volunteers and for the community centres, etc., that have been made available. So well done to everybody with that. Well, I have to say, uh, at the Bogner Health Centre, I think someone would like to have had some uh, coffee making, tea making facilities. You might like to have one. Anyway, uh, the other subject I want to raise with you is equally health related. And actually, I go back many years, uh, having when, my, when we first came across each other, and I was campaigning somewhere as a would-be candidate. Um, and you, we, I think it was about the uh, oil sea rate, but what I raised with you then was, and you told me as a GP, as a serving GP, was about um, sewage, and then uh, when there were storms, well, you know, people got tummy upsets. What have you got to say about southern water and its discharge policy? Well, where do I start? I mean, southern water, frankly, have been a public health disaster across the whole of Kent, East Sussex, West wow. Sussex, and well, of the, of the southeast. Their disgraceful um, disregard for environmental legislation and pumping untreated raw sewage into rivers, watercourses, and our sea is nothing short of a, a, a well, I say it's a, a disgraceful um, um, uh, de um, ignoring of the environmental legislation. And it's a, and their recent um, very heavy fining by the courts of 90 million pounds for yes. repeated breaches was a signal of the displeasure of the judiciary with, with this. The problem with Southern Water is they just see this as a business charge uh, and they're happy to, to pay the fines and go on polluting. Um, my view is that um, uh, court action should be taken against the directors of Southern Water 
who are ultimately responsible for this, so that they are and they are personally liable for it, and that they should be charged with these uh, with these offences, not sort of a, a corporate fine against the the company. They continue to pay enormous sums to their share, shareholders. Uh, Macquarie, who have taken over Southern Water, are well known in the business for asset stripping and uh, leaving companies with large debts. And I would want to see very strong evidence that that is not happening with Southern Water. Um, it's people's lives we're talking about. Yep. It's tourism, it's residents, and we need to have really strong action to ensure that it isn't a promise of jam tomorrow. We need urgent action uh, today. I've been involved in the campaign against sewage and seas for at least 30 years. Yes. Um, and it's not over till it's solved. And we've all got to pull in this one together. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I'll lead, give you a leading question. If you were the Prime Minister, would you want to see legislation to nationalise such companies or take them um, into public ownership? Uh, contrary to my normal views on such things, yes, I would, because um, water is not a, um, a competitive um, industry, it's a monopoly. And in, in, in my view, it's there for the benefit of everybody. Um, and it should be, they, it, 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 in my view, nationalisation of the water utilities would be the right way forward, um, much as the railways are having to be taken back into uh, yes. public ownership for, for similar reasons. So I think it is with uh, with uh, water utilities. Okay. I, 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 well, everyone would be really grateful to you for this, uh, the, your views, very strong views, I, um, I, I have to say, on these two very important health issues. And we'd like to thank you from the Bogner Herald. Uh, this will go into our news bulletin and also onto our Facebook page. Uh, so thank you very much. It's my pleasure, uh, Jan. Thanks very much for asking me. Back to Ukraine, the story of a small island garrisoned by a small Ukrainian force, maybe a hundred. A Russian naval vessel's captain politely signaled, suggest you surrender. Ukrainian commander to Russian vessel, go fuck yourselves. The island was shelled, 13 Ukrainians killed. Not so easy, eh, Vlad? Next week, ahead of the Aaron Council meeting on 9th of March, a Herald special report on the history of Bognes regeneration. You'll find some real revelations there. Finally, a mother pussycat finds her wayward errant kitten scuffing up the bedspread. She chases and cuffs it off and then makes the bed again. It's there. Watch the video. There are so many more stories and videos in the review. You can contact us with your news, pics and stories. But for now, that's the news summary. Let's show support for the brave people of Ukraine and do our bit to help.